Hey everybody, it's another 148. In fact, it's the tech special that I had laying around here. So, what did I find wrong with this tech special? Uh, well, I took out this, you know, nonsense in the back. Um, and, uh, of course, the uh, this T TR-24 down here is still missing. i got to put it back. Um, you know, some glue in random spots. It had corroded a pin on the VCO. Repa managed to repair it and just stuff it back in. And uh, <clears throat> it works again. Outstanding problems with this radio. Bad channel selector. You look at the digits. Um, you see them cutting out. So that's, and it also um, it causes things to happen, PLL unlock and such, and just because it's just doing crazy ass uh, things in the divider, um, <clears throat> throw you in some kind of random crazy channel. So it needs a new channel selector, but I can get that from a donor. Um, that said, um, I was just piddling around with uh, the transmitter alignment and. Uh, looking at the spectrum of this radio, which after I've pretty much cleaned it up, uh, I've got this thing hooked up to an external monitor, the uh, spectrum analyzer that is. I don't know how well that's going to be. It's there's you know, lights in here kind of making a, let's see if you turn that light off if that's not better. Of course it's better. Um, turn this light off. Okay. Anyway, so now that it's less or more dimly lit in here, um, Here's what the radio looks like. So, there we are. That's our 27 megahertz. And, uh, you know, we're, um, <clears throat> where are we at? Center's 42.5, so it's 35 megahertz. So, um, we are at, um, where did, what is the stop? I thought it was 60 megahertz. Yeah, stop to 60 megahertz. So we don't have any 54 because it would be in here um, where that little tiny spike is right there. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you can't really get rid of all of it. Um, you know, this thing is um, very sensitive, the spectrum analyzer. So, you know, there is some. Um, now what I wanted to show, I'm going to turn on all the lights again so we could see what's going on. Just shed some light on the situation here. Um, people love to monkey around with these bias controls. This was one of the problems with this radio, this is bias controls. People love to play with them. Now, what people, I guess, don't realize is while they're sitting in here te tweaking these things for max power, they're also tweaking them for maximum spurious emissions. So, you know, I'm going to go and mess up my adjustment, and I'm just going to crank these suckers randomly. Okay, so, well, anyway, I did... Somebody will say, yeah, I didn't see you do it, because I keep, I'm holding the camera, and I'm usually not holding it, and so I'm just going to crank these things randomly, like, you know, I'm just going to just turn them some kind of crazy positions okay now we're gonna look at this spectrum again and here here this has come up a little bit but what's that that's something spurious that wasn't there before so <clears throat> you know you monkey around with these things and you're actually causing other problems so if you think you're getting that extra you know half a watt or whatever it is or quarter of a watt or something like that well that's not doing you any good if that's it you know hang on here let's let's see where that is for for grins okay so you know you only have two hands and when you're doing this you really need three one to squeeze the mic one to move the so i'm put the mic between my legs and squeeze it so where's that what frequency is that 38-ish something megahertz, you know? That's not where we want signal. It's just spurious, it's just garbage that's that's coming out of there now. So the um, alignment uh, uh, instructions say, you know, you do these things. 
RF watt meter do these coils, these coils here, or, or these coils here, okay, just for maximum. Same as step one, um, which is the spectrum analyzer and adjust L36. Well, I've already adjusted L36, so I don't need to tinker with it anymore. Um, that's not one that one of the ones I turned. L36 is this guy over here. I didn't turn that. I turned these two, uh, these two potentiometers back here. So, and what do you got here? Number four. Uh, well, I'm skipping over carrier balance. It's a sideband. We're not looking at sideband right now. Um, three and four, or four and five rather. I'm sorry. Same as step three, which is to transmit upper sideband, insert ammeter at TP7, TP8, adjust bias. Um, just for grins, I only have the uh, the final hooked up. I did the driver before. I know I screwed it up, but um, it, it will make a difference. So um, what we're looking for here is sideband. And now I'm going to try to get the mic in between my legs. Now, don't know how well you can see that, but what am I transmitting on here? That's drawing a hell of a lot of current, okay? It's it's bad. So what we need to do is we need to get that needs to be. If I can keep the camera in the right place, that needs to be amps D, milliamps DC. So we need to back that down to 50 milliamps DC. And it's real touchy that control. Real touchy. Let's just go with that for the moment and just look. So now that I've tweaked this. Um, doing this, I'm telling you, doing this without a third hand is rough. Okay, so I tweaked this, and you can see that it's greatly reduced. Uh, it's there, but I didn't get it quite adjusted right. But you can see the difference. I mean, it's um, it's just not not really there anymore. So, you know, this is important. Oh well, also the driver. <laughs> I didn't do the driver. That's why. That's why you still see it because I had bounced the driver out. Um, you know, it's it's it, as soon as I readjust the uh, the driver, it'll probably be all gone. So um, th these were important too, and these were important to not muck around with. Um, you don't need a spectrum analyzer to do it because they don't call for that, but. You know, I, I I have seen so many of these things over time where people, who, oh, well, I'll just turn those to get maximum output power. Um, well, that's not that's not how that works. So, um, you know, you're you're adjusting those things to. Um, I can I can probably draw it better. So let's do that. Okay. So, what's happening on those output transistors? Okay. Uh, white piece of paper, um, pen, so sinusoid, uh, well as much as it can be by my drawing with one hand sort of like this. Okay, so what you have this, you're supposed to have, you know, nice rounded uh, waveform. Well those adjustments, if they're adjusted incorrectly, you might have something like this. which, you know, the tops will be flattened off. Well, you do this and insert spurious emission, harmonics, and other such things. So you need you need to get that thing, you know, smooth. You need it smooth. So not, not something like that. I look it up to a scope, and you can probably see it. Uh, the waveform will look chopped. Um, it may also look, uh, I'll try to draw it. It may also look something like this. At the at the you know rising, you may see like a bite taken out of it. Um, that's another symptom, you know, because of these are misadjusted, and you know you just don't know what kind of spurious, you know, garbage is generated by the transmitter. Now this transmitter can, uh, you know, just with um, reversing what the golden screwdriver has done, like spread these coils. You know, they love to get in here and spread these coils, and <clears throat> turn this and tweak these. Um, this is basically the only one that you really maybe should touch. Um, <clears throat> you know, and that's basically it. Um, so.
So anyway, uh, what else we've got here? Upper side band, two tone. Okay, we're just that that at that point we're just doing uh, power adjustments. And there's not a whole lot to to adjusting this transmitter. It's <clears throat> you know seven steps. You know it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, and really, the most important steps in here uh, are is probably two, four, and five. Um, well, four and five because you don't want to destroy the outputs because that actually is detrimental to the outputs and can destroy them. Uh, over time, they'll probably just end up going boom. Um, you definitely want to do number two if you can do it. If you can't do it, then leave it. Just leave it the hell alone. You got to have one of these wonderful gems here. One of the reasons why I got this because I wanted to show this. Um, next video that I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw my... Um, uh, my mod of my heavily modified 148 up here and show basically you know that uh, my heavily modification has not affected the uh, transmitter in any way in fact it can clean it up just as good as this one um, no problem and uh, I mean for all intents and purposes once you adjust this thing properly it's clean you know it's a, it's, it's gonna be a clean transmitter it, it, no doubt um, one of the things that I have, you know, find interesting about about doing this is, um, and I don't know, this is a question that I've asked, and I remember seeking input from some gurus once, and I remember the answer being, well, we don't really know. Um, when, you know, back when they did these uh, alignments, um, and it's funny because me and Mike, uh, from Mike's Radio Repair, we talked about this in depth a couple of times uh, the other day. Um, the um, way that you used to adjust a radio in the olden days, if you go to an old, old-timey uh, radio service manual, you know, with the tubes or valves or whatever you want to call them, you know, depends on whether or not you're a yank or if you're, if you're not, um, you didn't have a spectrum analyzer you would quite literally throw a TV down next to the radio and turn the TV to like channel 2 or something like that key the radio and then turn turn the coils like this for <laughs> maximum uh, 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 or minimum interference on the TV that was like literally the way you did it <laughs> it was it was something else you use the TV uh, to, to make that determination. Nowadays, you know, we have spectrum analyzers, so you can just, um, uh, you know, hook it up and, and tweak it and move on with life. But, um, so what my thought was, and I am, uh, uh, is why not adjust the, uh, the bias with a spectrum analyzer? Because if it's just biased, you'll see it. Uh, and if you, um, uh, if you turn those, while you have a, while you're looking at a spectrum analyzer and removing the the uh, spurious emissions you're going to find out that you're actually very very close to this 25 and 50 milliamps i think this one was 55 and i think i want to say that one was like 23 or something like that when i looked at the meter um after i had used a spectrum analyzer and just removing spurious emissions um <clears throat> now the other uh, you know, flip side of this is not every semiconductor is exactly the same. We all know that, but you know, these adjustments are made for, you know, they're written in a way for, you know, as a sort of a generalization. Um, you know, they, they took a, probably a sample of radios and they found out, okay, well, we wanted to, you know, adjust it for this, adjust it for this, and it works the best, and it's sort of the meeting in the you know the uh the happy you know the happy the, the middle the, the have the middle ground so why not just adjust them with a spectrum analyzer so i asked that question i remember asking that question of a couple of rf guys and um they were like well you know and just him and haw and there's nothing he's like i got somebody one so one person's like oh there's nothing really wrong with that i suppose that would work too and then another guy's like well but it's about the current not so much the spurious emissions and it seemed to be a varying opinion of it so um i don't know that one's interesting because um 
you know, um, I can't imagine that two milliamps on the uh, on the driver is going to make much of a difference. I can't believe five milliamps is going to make much of a difference on the final. Um, my take on it would be is I'd rather that thing just be this. And remember, this particular radio, this radio. I go and pull the other one out. You may find out that that's a complete. It will guarantee you it will be a completely different uh, current draw. Because they're just going to be component differences. It's just it's just a matter of component differences at this point. But it seems to me, since we already have to use a spectrum analyzer in this alignment for the 54 megahertz trap, why don't we use it for the... Anyway, um, I got varying opinions. It was like 20 years ago I asked that question. And I got varying opinions about it. So, I don't know. It's, it's kind of my thought for... For me, I think I'm probably, just because I want the radio to be clean and not splatterbox and not have any spree submissions, I'm going to personally adjust for minimum spurious emissions and not necessarily bias current. Um, because I think that that close, more, my opinion is, is that cl more closely matches the components themselves rather than just doing some general, just get these current draws and move on. Um, so anyways... That's my thought. Um, so I'm going to tweak this radio back to the way it is and then um, probably go find the donor uh, channel selector and uh, put the donor channel selector in it and, you know, find a set of covers for it. I don't have a set of covers or a faceplate for this radio. So, uh, it, I mean, I literally got it like this. Um, just it is what it is. Not, not a whole lot I can really do about that hole in the back. Uh, that is another thing that is what it is, but, um, you know, I could, I guess, always put the pot back in it, but, um, nah, I just put a 10 turn in it. Uh, I'll get the right control. I'll, I'll do full alignment on this receiver, all that kind of good stuff. Make this a good, you know, working, uh, radio because it's clean. Otherwise, I mean, you, you know, everything's all bundled. It's just, it's all factory bundled up and everything. Everything's actually clean. It's just, um, it had a mod, and it had a really bad tweak job. You know, no controls on this radio have been repurposed. Um, you know, it's just a bad tweak job, basically. Uh, and corrosive glue. <laughs> so I need to clean up the rest of the corrosive glue, uh, swap caps out, uh, align, make it a working radio with no covers, and then uh, I'll have a, a working radio with no covers that doesn't have any spurious emissions, since now I have this wonderful spectrum analyzer to uh, do the last uh, bits of adjustment to it. So anyways, if anybody has any opinion about doing these uh, via, by, by reducing spurious emissions rather than uh, by, by um, you know, within reason, I don't want these things to be, you know, 100 friggin' milliamps or something just crazy off the wall. But if anybody has an opinion about that, I'd like to hear it. Um, and if there's a reason why that shouldn't be, I'd like to hear that too. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's my hypothesis, and and just thinking about it makes sense. But I may be missing a variable, so uh, you know, please chime in. Anyways, till next time. Sorry about you know shaky cam and all that good stuff. Hope this was interesting. So catch you guys later.